This is madness in a plate. This is ravioli carbonara, done the most authentic way. I am very proud to introduce you to the most beautiful dish I have ever created. You ready to see the cream coming out? Look at the carbonara cream. Look at this beautiful carbonara cream jumping out. Ah. Oh. Mm. Wow. Wow. For the ravioli dough, we need 500 grams of zero zero flour. You can also use plain flour and five eggs. So every egg, 100 grams of flour. That's why I'm doing 500 grams of flour, five eggs. For the filling, we need 400 grams of guanciale, pig chick, with the skin on and everything. We're gonna remove it. For the filling, we need six eggs. We're gonna use five egg yolks and one entire egg. Then we need about 200 grams of pecorino cheese. Make sure it's finally, finally grated, please. Black pepper. Now we're going to make the dough with our hands. This is the best part, the fun part. Here we get the flour and put it on the bench. So what we do now, we get our hand like this and we go all the way in, ready? Woo! We go in and we do a well, just like that. Try to make the well nice and you know wide, but make sure that you don't have any short uh, edges, like you don't want the egg to go outside. So this is a pretty good size. Now I'm gonna break the eggs in here just in case we get some um, shells that we don't want. We don't want the shells in the pasta dough, okay? Can you see there's no shells in there? We're gonna put the eggs straight in, in the well. Now you can use a fork to mix it, but I'm gonna use my hands, okay? I just quickly rinse my, wash my hands. Some people like to put salt. I do not put salt in my uh, pasta dough. Uh, you don't have to. You put salt in the sauce and in the pasta water. Also, I see people now online only using egg yolks. That's totally wrong, guys. Please don't do that. Do not waste the egg white. Please don't do that, guys, okay? Pasta should be made with the entire egg. So what I'm doing now, I'm basically mixing the eggs. I want this to become a nice uh, orange color. Now, a little bit at a time, I'm gonna add flour in there. So, start, so we can make this creamy, a little bit creamy. See, it's a fun process. I'm only using one hand for this process, okay? A bit gentle because we do not want the eggs to escape from the well, okay? Make sure nothing, nothing gets stuck at the bottom. We keep adding the flour. As you can see, it's becoming thicker and thicker. Now guys, if you do this in the blender, it's actually not the right thing to do because you're stressing the pasta um, and it's not a good thing to do. So if you wanna do this, use a stand mixer, okay? Okay, see this? It's all combined together. It's not runny anymore, see? I'm gonna get some help from this uh, scraper just in case uh, my uh, pasta dough gets stuck. For now, I can use my hand. Of course, it's sticky now, so don't worry about it. It's meant to be sticky now. Do not use any water yet. Some people are gonna ask me already, what am I gonna do if my dough is too dry? I'll show you soon. All right, looks like the dough wants to be formed. See, so it's getting to the right consistency. I'm gonna use a scraper now. Okay, here's a scraper, perfect. Now I'm gonna start using my hands, both of them. So make sure you don't wash your hands now. You don't want moisture on your hands, okay? Your hands should be already washed, okay? At this point, you don't wash your hands. You leave your hands sticky like this, and you start folding like that, okay? And then what we do now, we turn it like this. So it's a long log. We do the same. It's easy, guys. You just need to take your time and put love into it. Now, I have big hands, I'm a bit strong, so I'm using my fingers, but you're actually meant to use the palm of your hands. So you go like this, press, fold back, press, fold back. Be 
Can you see on the flower it's been um, sorry, it's already getting absorbed. Of course, the dough is also now more firm, gets firmer and firmer. It is important, guys, you don't stress at this point. The dough is not ready. Can you see it's got lots of cracks? You need to keep going, okay? Some of you might say to me, oh, my dough is too dry. What am I going to do? Well, do not use water, okay? Don't, don't do that yet. Keep, keep going. If it is way, way too dry, you just want to wet your hands under the sink, under the tap, just quickly, and then you knead the dough again. The moisture from your hand will transfer in the dough and will help you to make the dough smoother again. But my recommendation, don't do that yet. Keep going. As you can see, there is no flour left on the bench. Look how clean it is. Now, as we get to this point, it can be a little bit more faster. This is getting softer, because the more I touch it, the softer it becomes. So how do you know when it's ready? See, this is not ready, because you can see the cracks. This is not a good sign. You want your pasta to be have a smooth surface. So we still have some work to do. When you know that you're done, you do a little bit of this to your dough. So your dough is nice and ready. Now pretend you're making a pizza bowl, okay? When you make a pizza bowl, you do this, and basically these are your tests if your dough is nice and smooth. See the surface is smooth? Now, we need to make sure our dough doesn't dry up, so you need to get plastic wrap, okay? With a glad wrap. We're going to put it all around it. Because the last thing we want to do is to see this pasta dough to get ruined. Now, you can keep this in the fridge for about 15, maximum 20 minutes, no more. The dough is done. So now wash your hands, you don't want eggs on your hands, and it's time to work on the guanciale, the pig cheek. What we do is this, the skin needs to go. Can you see like the skin is gone, we don't want to eat the skin, and now we're going to clean this up. The pepper, you can guys, actually you can eat this, it's not bad for you, okay? So just uh, try to scrape it off, if you know what I mean. Look, I removed this much uh, pepper, probably too much fat, a little bit of meat, which I don't want to. Um, so yeah, this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna cut the guanciale into strips. And then what I like to do, to do this again, strips, more strips. I just want to remind everyone, I've never made the ravioli carbonara before. It is an experiment and I'm having fun doing this. It's always a nice experiment. Right, here we go. We've got a little bit more to do. Beautiful pan. And now we gently want to cook this guanciale, okay? Don't rush it. Make sure we cook it evenly. And the guanciale becomes nice and crispy, but tender at the same time. Now, can you see um, the pepper around this? If I left all the pepper on the guanciale, uh, the pan would have been become black already. Also, we're gonna add some uh, nice fresh pepper after. So, and also look at this. Look at the fat melting and turning into oil. So you'd never have to put oil. This is gonna be very oily. Look at that. Look at this beautiful guanciale. Some of them are already crisping up. This process should take between five to seven minutes. Also depends on how big your pan is. Look how much oil we have from the fat. That would be the soil for our carbonara. It's been about five minutes. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get the guanciale out and we're going to put it on the chopping board. Guys, the oil 
stairs in the pan, okay? Make sure you drain it. Keep the oil in there, because the oil will be the sauce for our ravioli. Look at this beautiful amount of oil that we have. Now, if you guys are worried about the pepper, I'm not. Uh, you can actually drain it and remove it. But this, for me, is a perfect sauce for a ravioli. So we're gonna keep this on the side because we're gonna put the ravioli right in there. Okay, now, with this guanciale, you think we're gonna make a normal carbonara? No, this, we're gonna break it into small pieces, like crush it, crush it. We're gonna put this inside the filling of the ravioli. Oh yeah, the ravioli will have a surprise. Let's do that. I don't want my guanciale to be finely grated like pecorino. I want my guanciale to, I want to feel it when I eat it. I want to bite it, okay? So I've got this. This is going to go straight in the um, filling. But some of it, we'll keep it for the end, for decoration, because we need some uh, decoration for the final uh, plating. So let's make the filling. To make the carbonara filling for the ravioli, we're gonna use egg yolks. Five egg yolks and one entire egg. But keep in mind, the white we're gonna use it to seal the ravioli after. So make sure you keep the white, please. The white goes away, and here's the yolk. Always nice to use nice eggs. And now we add the egg, entire egg in the mix. Tie a egg going in. Perfect. So we keep the egg white for after. Now let's concentrate on the filling. So we need to really whisk very well these five egg yolks. I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the pepper from now. Be generous. Mix it. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the pecorino cheese. Grate it, finally grate the pecorino cheese. We'll just keep in mind, we need to keep about 50 grams for the end. Now at this point, as you can see, uh, what you meant to achieve here, you meant to achieve a nice thick cream, which is the filling for a ravioli. See that, it's already creamy. So you can see it's nice and thick. That's what you want, guys. You want that, okay? See how beautiful it is? Looks like a gelato, but it's not thick enough. So, this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna add beautiful guanciale in there. Not all of it, most of it about 80% of it, okay? All in. We keep about this much to decorate the final plate. Just a little bit for decoration, not too much. See now, I'm mixing this and the guanciale will help us to get a even more thick. Now I see, I do want this a little, slightly thicker. So let me put a little bit more a little bit more pecorino, guys. Just want to put a little bit more, just because I do want this to be slightly, slightly thicker. So I hope you do have more pecorino at home. You can use parmigiano or grano padano. Just slightly, slightly thicker. It's like if I make, um, you know, a ravioli with spinach and ricotta, you know, that, that texture, that thickness. Yeah, this is better now, see? It's not as runny. This is better, I want this. Now we're gonna place this in the fridge and um, until the uh, ravioli uh, sheets are ready to be filled. The ravioli dough has been resting in the fridge for, for about 20 minutes, I would say. And it's nice, very nice and moist. Look at that. It's beautiful. The gluten has been formed. Beautiful, beautiful. I recommend you to always cover your dough during the process so it doesn't dry up. Get some extra flour just in case you might need it, okay? Because you probably do need it. 
please get yourself a nice pasta machine. It's a lot of fun. If you don't have a pasta machine, you can um, stretch the dough with uh, the rolling pin, more difficult. So um, the pasta machine makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I start by cutting a little bit of the dough. Let's say about 130 grams of dough to make a sheet of ravioli, okay? Now, this is a small one, we just do as a test. What I like to do is um, to make it a little bit flat. Let's put a little bit of flour, okay? Just a little bit of flour on this side and a little bit of flour on this side. Also, we wanna put some flour on the pasta machine. So on the pasta machine, we wanna start from the wider setting. It has to be the widest one, okay? So we put this through. Easy. Now we're gonna do this a few more times. Fold, fold again. We're gonna put this through at least five times. Fold it just once, through again. So they keep going like that and because See, it's also good that the dough actually doesn't uh, stick to the machine, which is great. Okay, it's better now. See, we got this. Now that we have this shape, let's move to the second setting. And this machine is number two. So we're going uh, tighter, not tight. See, didn't stretch much. Put a little bit of flour on the machine, always keep it not sticky. Now we go on number three. Make it more tight. So it's stretching a little bit longer. Now we go on number four. See how it's stretching, stretching, stretching more, see? Now you will see, now we go on number five and you will see how much it's gonna stretch now, ready? Beautiful, now I do the last setting for me, it's number six. Um, basically, you don't wanna make spaghetti or tagliatelle, you don't wanna thin, very thin, because otherwise the, the ravioli will break, and we do not want the ravioli to break. So we want this to be not too thin. See, when I can see my fingers, I think I can say, yeah, it's ready. It's not too thin, not too thick. So here I have a beautiful dough, which we're gonna make it flat a little bit. Some flour on, not too much, make it flat. Okay, so here we got a white setting now. Oh, very long, gonna fold, fold it again. Now we put it in this way, not a long way, this way. Flatten it so it fits in the pasta machine. The reason why we do this a few times, about five times at least, is because we need to get hair out of the dough. Here we go. Perfect, see, that's nice. Now, we're gonna go down to number two. So we'll stretch more and more. See, much is stretched already. Now we go to number three. Beautiful. Number four. Now we go on number five. Your pasta machine might have different numbers. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that. So you can see my fingers, which is a good sign. That's what I want to do. Just want to see my feet, the fingers. It's not too thin. You look at the thickness. It's not too thin. The thickness is just perfect. It's not going to break when you cook it. Beautiful. Let's fill it up. If you're doing this on timber, it doesn't get stuck, but on other surfaces, it might get stuck. So just uh, put a little bit of uh, flour and then we put this beautiful ravioli dough here. Okay, beautiful ravioli dough. It's nice, great thickness. Look at the thickness, that's what we want. Not too thin, otherwise it will break, but not too thick, otherwise it won't cook fast. We need to cook this pretty fast, okay? Now here we have the carbonara cream that we place in the fridge. So it's very thick now, look at that. Look at that, that's what we want. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use two spoons to create the perfect filling. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit here. Here we go. 
uh, not too close to each other, okay? Leave, leave room, please. Leave some room to each other so that we can cut it. So the, the distance between each other is like a tablespoon weight. Say that. Now we're gonna put the next one right here. If I want, I can top them off with some extra guanciale. A little bit extra on top. Guanciale is everything here, right? Here we are. Now you remember what I said before, we kept the egg whites. Yeah, this is when we use the egg white. Uh, this to be more professional, but you can just use your fingers. Put it there, on this side like that. You can also use water if you don't want to use egg white. So don't stress if you don't have egg whites anymore. Just use water and it will do the job. Now, this is how my nonna does it, okay? We're gonna get one side of the ravioli, so from here, and we fold it, okay? We're not putting the dough on top. We're just folding it like this, doing like a like half moon shape, if you know what I mean. So before we do anything, make sure you connect both sides. Okay, you don't want gaps. Make sure you connect it right there. And here we go, see? So the egg, I already sealed it. Now what we wanna do, we wanna make sure we get air out of it. So with the fingers, gonna go like this. Just like this, just like that. You know, like a tablespoon room in between. So we go like this first, so the head goes out from the front, and then you press at the front too, okay? Just like that. And again, we'll do it. we need to get the hair out, otherwise the ravioli will explode when you cook them. For ravioli, you do this. If you don't have it, just use a normal knife, but if you have this, it helps. So we're gonna cut the ravioli into um, like half moon, okay? So you go like this, try to use as much dough as you can, okay? And like that, perfect. Remove the extra excess, which we might be able to use it later on. And here are the ravioli. Now, the ravioli might be sealed to you, but maybe they're not sealed. So what we're gonna do, just in case, just to make sure they're sealed properly, we get a fork and we press. This is what my nonna always does. We just press, okay? Just press on the sides, just to be extra careful, guys, okay? So that way we know they're sealed perfectly. And then we place them on a tray with baking paper, so they don't get stuck, okay? Just like that. Look how pretty. They're handmade, so of course they don't look the same. And my nonna makes them. I don't know how she does it, but she makes every single ravioli the same size. She doesn't use any machines or nothing, but her ravioli are all the same size. Look at me here. They're different. These look similar, and now these look similar, but different to them. Here's the carbonara ravioli already. First batch, of course, is better. Second batch, the room became a bit too hot. They don't look as pretty, but they are definitely delicious. Let's cook them. One thing I really love about this recipe is that we didn't use any salt. I love it. So good. The salt is natural from the pecorino cheese and from the guanciale. Now I'm gonna cook some ravioli and they have to cook for a maximum of 90 seconds. Eight, nine. Guys, they are cooking beautifully. What we're looking at here as well is to make sure they don't open. So I have to say, we did seal them very well. They're not opening, so the cream is not coming out. We have 30 more seconds. They should cook for no more than 90 seconds. In the meantime, let's warm up the oil from the guanciale. Okay, guys, it's time to get them out. Let's do it. All right, perfect, the ravioli have cooked. I'm gonna add them now in the oil. The beautiful guanciale oil. Yeah, look at that, guys. The flavors that you get from this. E mi chiedo va la pena di restare qui abbracciati mentre il giorno non c'è più e la luna da lassù fa da specchio ai nostri baci. Now, this is off the stove, ladies and gentlemen, which means we can't toss it, right? So what we're going to do now, 
We are going to add some pecorino cheese, which we don't want this to go clumpy, okay? So we want this to make this a little bit creamy. And the guanciale sauce is really angry at the moment. It's really like aggressive. Look guys, look how beautiful this is. We've got the ravioli swimming in the guanciale oil, so they are full of flavors. And it's time to plate them. Let's get some guanciale oil. Stop this to spread. Some uh, pecorino. Now, I'm going to place the ravioli. For one, in there. For two, three ravioli. Here we have beautiful pecorino cheese that we need to put on top. And now we're gonna put some guanciale right on top. Oh, bellissimo. Guys, this is ravioli carbonara made for you. You ready to see the cream coming out? Look at the carbonara cream. Look at this beautiful carbonara cream jumping out. Ah, oh. yeah. Look at that. You want it creamy? You want the, of course, you want the eggs to cook, but you want them to stay creamy. You don't want them to become a frittata. And now it's time to eat it. Mm. Guys, the detail, the oil from the guanciale adds so much flavor that you can't understand it. Until you try it. Wow. Wow. If I had a restaurant, I would put this on the menu right now. Down this way, I won't change anything. This, it's perfection. This is probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever created in my life. I love it. Honestly, this is best creation of 2024. Guys, I'm in love with this dish. I can't wait to feed my family with this beautiful ravioli carbonara. Thank you so much for watching this. Write a comment below. Let me know what you think. Is it too crazy? Is it too beautiful? Is this going to be better than carbonara? Classic spaghetti carbonara. <laughs> Maybe. See you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Beautiful food I've ever created. Mmm.